सो वी आर लाइव नाउ वेलकम टू एम एस गोल्डन जुबली वेबिनार सीरीज एवरी वन सो टॉपिक फॉर टूडे इज पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट सर्विसेज फ्रॉम रिस्पॉन्स टू रिकवरी इन व्यू ऑफ कोविड सो एवरी वन ऑफ अस आर हैविंग क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग हाउ अवर गवर्नमेंट इज कोपिंग अप विद द फैक्टर्स ऑफ अवर सेफ्टी एंड एस्पेशली इन केस ऑफ मुंबई विच इज डेंसली पॉपुलेटेड so today we have mr mustafa sonasad with us for answering most of our question he is an urban planner and a transport planner especially a, a transport modeling professional he has been working with the uh, surat municipal corporation from past few years and he has been also engaged in many urban transportation projects like uh, surat metro then service level benchmarking for urban transport brts city buses Surat operational plan for public transport services. So Mustafa, as you have been working with the government, so can you answer us that how they are coping up with the financial losses and also what measures are they taking for ensuring public safety and maintaining safety? Uh, yes, Ruchi. So good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to you know I'm enjoying on this uh, webinar topic which is being organized by Pillai uh, College of Architecture. and uh, i want to thank you know ms suchi joshi ms sir sir kitty and pillai uh, college of architecture first of all for giving me this an opportunity to share my experience at uh, how you know public transport agencies are coping in view of this covid 19 which is there or uh, surrounding us uh, so thanks suchi for uh, such a brief introduction uh, you know uh, coming back to your question uh, you know we all know that uh, an evidence has shown actually that uh, it has been observed that there is a, a you know a steep drop in public transport ridership volumes by 90% right further it has been observed that there is up to 60% reduction in air pollution as well but establishing uh, the level of ridership in public transport is a big challenge for cities right and as people may be looking for more options especially personal modes that allow for safer travel in the post lockdown scenario uh apart from that you know i mean we are all aware that india has a robust uh, you know 700 kilometers of operational metro rail in majorly 18 major cities and a brt network of around 450 kilometers which is operational in 11 cities across the country and they carry you know i mean uh, around about 10 million passengers daily uh but uh, as we all know that you know social distancing norms are being uh, practiced as of now and uh, the capacity will be utilized just to at 25 to 50% of pre corona virus levels so that is something you know that is a concern with public transport agencies like us which uh, you know which are directly involved uh, in giving service to passenger for communication uh, such dramatic and dynamic changes in demand and supply will require complementing this public transport systems right with alternative modes of transit uh so you know we'll be talking about uh, all these things in 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 detail right how you know we are doing it what is the uh, international case studies or how world is you know coping with uh, this kind of things and uh, what is the uh, what is indian cities are doing especially and then i will uh, come i will you know i mean uh, brief introduction about the sur what surat is doing actually uh, by presenting a case study right so let us you know start with the presentation maybe you know all these questions will be able to you know uh, it will be better if we can start yeah so you know like i said uh, this is you know this is an interesting slide which depicts you know stress on public transport uh, you can go through the uh, right hand image which is there and it shows uh, how uh, transit hello, ridership is hello uh, good morning uh, mustafa on, sir yeah good morning uh, yeah yeah I, good morning sir uh, i am joydeep uh, and uh, i i formally welcome you uh, and really thank you for your time uh, of actually attending and doing this webinar for us uh, is it a good idea uh, shuchi ma'am to wait for another 5 odd minutes to see if we have a slightly larger audience than this and then we can start so uh, what do you say sir so we are actually sure. live on youtube oh we are live on youtube okay yeah. okay okay fair enough then i think we should start okay mustafa yes. sir i again formally uh, thank you for being here and uh, the other uh, vote of thanks we will probably do at the end of uh, the session and uh, of course like i said i mean people uh, who are asking questions can uh, hold their questions till uh, the time that okay mustafa sir is actually done with his own presentation then uh, 
we look forward to a very enlightening session we can start with the sure thanks a lot sir yeah, yeah you thanks a lot sir uh, yeah uh, okay. i have already okay. shared this screen is, okay. it, is it is it yeah yeah yes, yes. yeah yes. thanks yeah so coming back to the presentation you know we have uh, seen that ride transit ridership has fallen worldwide you know i mean these are major five cities which is there in the world so if you take example of beijing seoul barcelona london new york you can see the scenario you know i mean you can see the difference uh, the, the the you know the comparison between what ridership was in 2019 and uh, how it has changed in 2020 so basically there is you know i like i i like i stated that uh, there is a difference the public transit ridership has uh, you know dropped by 90% actually and uh, you know i mean this has directly impacted the revenues and costing side and uh, it has you know i mean uh, result into drastic loss of fare box revenues of public transport agencies apart from that it has also dropped uh, in commercial revenues you know i mean we have seen uh, international cities which have you know lifted cancellation of congestion charges we don't in india we don't have such kind of charges but uh, yes in international uh, cities we do have such kind of things right they have lifted uh, parking fees as well and uh, this has created an impact on your mark taxes on levies which is there being collected as a part of government right uh what you know i mean what has led to increase in cost is you know i mean we have uh, to see we have to observe Uh, that the buses capacity has reduced by 50%, right? So my revenue sharing almost have cutted by half, right? But the, my expense has not cut, and uh, due to that, this has you know uh, increased the gap between my uh, operation cost and operational revenue, which is there, and that is why you know my operational uh, uh, gap will increase, right? Uh, apart from that, we all know that you know Indian cities typically when you say any STUs, when you take example of STUs or any public transport agencies. we are saying that they are struggling with you know their losses and all those things and then, you know i mean uh, if you ask some layman or maybe if you ask a simple man they will see this as a you know profit and loss rather than giving it a service so there is a challenge which which was there pre covid as well you know i mean justifying that you know public transport is a service rather than it is a company or who makes profit and loss so that is there so uh, there lies a you know big challenge for sqs and public transport authorities like us and private operators as well uh, you know uh, to cope up with this so how do you tackle it so this was you know just a basic insight on uh, how you know world is how on what level the other public transport ridership is falling but apart from there if you want to know you know i mean this is uh, as a sports on census 2011 uh, how india is was moving before covid right so this is just you know the mode share of india level that uh, you know i mean uh, 48% of indians are using walk and cycle right to reach the destination apart you know for education or maybe job ties this is this is comprising of all the trips and 21% of you know indians were using public transport uh, now uh, you know i mean it is good that you know indians are using in the public transport of uh, non motor transport especially if you say walk and cycle is good uh, but when you take example of cities like mumbai delhi bangalore which are metro city which have you know average trip length of more than 8 kilometers uh the thing is you you can't walk for 8 kilometers right you need to have some sort of you know robust public transport network alternative to you know private transport which can you know take to your places and that is why you know public transport is an important role we have seen you know cities like mumbai have you know i mean uh, more than 50% uh, share of public transport where it is an important thing you know uh, for any planner or any you know government agency to maintain this gap as well you know post covid also because you know if 48% it is there right but the challenge is to maintain 21% as 21% we don't want 21% to reduce it to 15% or 10% because if there is you know a reduction in public transport share uh, we are very much sure and okay and then that is that is being done that will be catered by two wheeler or four wheeler and we have seen you know how our roads have been congested throughout you know indian roads what is what is the water the condition especially delhi mumbai how they are struggling with traffic right so we don't want unnecessary you know i mean uh, load on private transport if public transport share decreases so that is why you know what can be done how how can we cope up is there a question we need to answer uh so this study is being was being done by itdp and they have you know this is a sort of perception survey 
you can see you know the all the modes which are there in my graph and you can see the you know before covid and after covid situation these are basically you have uh, you know i mean comprising of job and education trees because they comprises um, majority of you know uh, trip comprises of uh, share of uh, all the trips now uh, if you see in graph post covid the walking has been increased cycling has been increased but pt has reduced right by 23% and auto rickshaw has also been reduced because you know many of the cities they have you know i mean uh, uh, they have not started auto rickshaws as well as of now but if you see i mean how how this has impacted in private modes so we can directly say i mean uh, see see the data actually the motorized two wheeler has you know grown by 9% the cars up to 8 18% so it is not something that you know public transport by you know leveraging public transport if the share decreases then it gets up by or impacted to nmt but it impacts my private mode and that is why you know agent uh, public transport agency or maybe government has to intervene right because if it gets increase right we can you know i mean imagine the kind of uh, congestion which will be there by on road uh, already you know indian roads you know v by c ratio is greater than 1 they have been exhausted the road capacity is not there whatsoever we have, we have seen we have you know observing the indian road conditions particularly in peak hours in mumbai delhi bangalore right just to cross a junction it takes you know half an hour so uh, this is an important you know characteristic or maybe a statistics to understand uh, the choice of travel modes for job education trips after you know especially covid is there so that is there now when you say i mean why why you know we are uh, being you know scared by that if my share increase what will happen actually so this is just you know this is very common slide for an planner right uh but you know for architecture students i have been you know told that uh, many of them are uh, today uh, architecture students are sort of you know i mean uh, they are hearing this presentation i just want to uh, you know explain them that you can see the amount of people which are there in three slides you know debate is there you know buses uh, buses are you know creating traffic on road and you know there's a nuisance of bicyclists which are uh, you know pedaling around the city and all those things so many of you know there is a debate actually uh, when you you know debate with common men or maybe uh, some layman which is there in your city so you have to see you have to see this picture the you know i mean the car the, the space which is required to transport this much amount of people by car compared to a bus and compared to bicycle so your car you know will take around 6 lakh square meter of space right on the road which is there a bus if you compare it will be just be taking 1.3 square meter bicycle it, it will take 7.9 yes but you know we have to see that they have they will be used for short and trips less than 5 km 3 km 4 km you know indian city is majority you know the condition is not that to you know i mean they can cycle for around 8 to 10 km there will be you know very less trips who will be you know going beyond 8 km or maybe beyond 5 km uh, people like to cycle within the neighborhood within the neighborhood area particularly they have good you know uh, cycle network and footpaths right then only they will be able to you know i mean cycle in a good way but safety is also concern when you uh, go for this mode so yeah, we can see and that is why you know i, I already you know uh, uh, put in uh, my previous slides as well that uh, this amount of space if you know it gets increased on private transport unnecessarily it will create congestion and you can see the comparison actually i don't have to say right so that is it apart from that uh you know i mean uh, after this uh, slide uh, you will see you know we have to as my buses has been reduced by 50% capacity in my metro I mean, with social distancing norms uh the capacity of buses metros you know suburban trains will reduce by half so what should i do you know uh, i i believe that you, you know mumbai have been you know other day i was just referring to uh, mumbai best uh, city bus services uh, statistics and i've seen that uh, they have around 4000 fleets in the city and they are transporting around 35 to 40 odd lakh lakhs odd people uh, to their home from their home to you know work places or maybe educational trips uh, but uh, you know challenge is uh, the capacity is reduced with existing fleet so maybe some public transport agencies like best or maybe sur citylink they have to create the additional infrastructure and for that infrastructure they will require funds actually but you know uh, we should uh, in this slide we should you know i mean uh, think of that uh, where, whether my infrastructure shall be spent on gray or maybe on green so gray you can see you know lot of flyovers and lot of uh, uh, initiation you know which is being initiated for private transport encouraging private transport that is gray part right and green part you know connecting 
a majority of you know we have seen that uh, this walking and you know cycling has also increased by 8% that is you know a significant rate the mode share is significant so if you as an agency as a government body you have to decide whether you want to invest on green or maybe or maybe green for the same 1000 crores right you may have you know around uh, 100 120 kilometers of complete street net, uh, network uh, including you know walk and cycles and all those and apart from that you can also have buses you know which can you as a p- complete public transport development so you know this is a client of you know debate uh, which uh, you know government has to take a call at whether they have to in- invest or grey or, or green right uh, especially after covid I'm just kind of a slide which at me uh now uh, this was an interesting slide which was being you know the research was being uh, made by a gentleman called Gerald Oliver which was from World Bank actually so you know he has uh, done this kind of analysis and it's very interesting actually if you see uh he has uh, 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 you know come to, uh, to this number that uh, with reduction of ridership for you know Six months post lockdown assumption. It is also an assumption that the rider. We have seen that you know ninety percent of ridership is down. But if it goes with this rate only, what is the amount of you know the losses, the deficit actually, which uh, the financial body or maybe an STU will have? So comparing you know all all, all the private operators, right? All the STUs which is there. Uh, yes, you know I mean uh, come on December, which is you know forty thousand eight hundred crores. Uh, which is huge uh, right and if you can see you know this financial collapse of operator is very likely without implementing new funding solutions because you know if if you ask any sqs or any public transport agencies you'll be able to bear for one month two month but they are pretty not sure about whether they will be able to carry all this you know uh, this track till six months or maybe one year we are not sure you know whether when this will stop because vaccine has not been yet been discovered and still the situation in india is something it is very scary it is you know i mean increasing day by day uh, <clears throat> we have seen the covid trends in past also uh, around 11000 cases are coming up daily in india uh, first is you know i mean brazil again second is us where brazil you will find around 30000 cases coming up second is us where you will find around 25000 cases coming up and then you have india where you have 11000 cases up so probably with such kind of population and whether you know we have, we know all the cities in india are densely populated where you know the densities of the cities are very very high uh we need to think of you know yeah, right and then and there you know i mean as a public transport agency you know to uh, see that as a reduced ridership as a f- result of physical distancing and concerns over the virus which is there uh demand may exceed supply calling for innovative approaches so that is yeah I just wanted to highlight that how you know uh, how public transport agencies just now are in position uh, they are not in you know bus transport is very low margin or loss making normal times but with revenue cuts by with, uh, you know the reduction of capacity by 15% the service says will not be sustained provided uh, a new funding solution has to be there right and that is why you know we need to think of innovative solutions so you know one thing is sure you know this was an interesting for a pick which i took from this iddp uh, they are doing the good research in but one talks of it so this can be our future that is for sure you know i mean pre covid stage also i mean you you have seen you know best buses you have seen mumbai local you know they are like being filled up by uh, beyond the saturation capacity and this is extremely unsafe You know, with corona also, without corona also, this is the answer. So it is not something that you know we should be. You know, uh, uh, we should focus after corona only. It is not something like that. this. The situation we can't travel like this anymore because it is extremely risky. Okay, with social distancing norm in place, wherein you you need to have minimum six feet of uh, distance between you know your you and your person who is traveling. So uh, this can be our future. So that is there. so how to cope it so you know we have sort of in you know, a public transport here we have tried to you know uh, make some uh, five plans actually right so plan 1 is prepare plan 2 is plan plan 3 is prevent plan 4 is perceive and plan 5 is perform so phase 1 as a guy sort of you know i mean if you can uh, uh, question any public transport agency which are what, what will phase 1 comprising of so phase one is thing you know but preparing bus stations my stops my depots and staff for ensuring safety and comfort of passengers before the service reopens 
right? Uh, phase two is nothing but you know planning for opening of short rolls in green zones majority, uh, where you know cases new cases are not coming up with minimum stuff soon after lockdown ends, right? Third phase is something you know operating routes in orange zones with preventive measure after 15 days from the opening of lockdown. It is all you know area divided into uh, its zoning pattern, but uh, you know in India we have seen that now we have done in cluster and non-cluster phases only. So that is there, you know, we have to maybe have to modify out the guidelines some of a bit. Uh, phase four is nothing but, you know, perceive and open the routes within the edge zone with 50% staff after 21 days from the date lockdown. Ends. And phase five, we can open the whole network. We have seen, you know, best services are opening. Uh, they have been, you know, uh, the operation is normal. They, have, they are operating routes and buses on the network. The other day, you know, before five or six days, there was a video on Twitter which got viral of best only. When you know a lot of passengers were trying to go to a bus, you know they were rushing to actually uh, to catch the bus, and that is something you know public transport agency has to be very careful. So what uh, I believe what they've decided, I was you know uh, referring the news that they have you know I mean uh, taken some private operators have hired some private operator private buses uh, to cater to demand because bus best doesn't have so much fleet. They have around four thousand buses, and to cater this demand, they will have they will require four thousand more. Right, so it is not something that you know. If it, it's not just a wizard kind of thing that it will just you know. I mean, if you rotate it and then additional four thousand buses will come uh, on road. It is not something we have to plan. We have to tender it out. We have to you know uh, give the contract. We have to uh, issue the work order. So all these require time. So what public transport agency or best has done, you know, they have decided to hire buses from private contractors, which is a good initiative, I must say. And let's see then how uh, they get, uh, you know, I mean, uh, how they will serve the city. Let's see. So this are, you know, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have, you know, I will uh, try to cover that. What can we learn from the efforts which are which was there overseas? So uh, we have seen that, you know, I mean, China on maybe, I mean, Australia and then Spain and Italy, all these cities had lockdown. Okay, but they have, you know, slowly in imposing and unlock uh, unlocking their cities and then you know i mean starting the public transport operation as well so these are some of the cities i've covered you know i mean just the case studies too that what other cities were doing uh, after covid so in usa you know they were they focused on cleaning subway sanitation equipment like metro card machines and all those good sanitization thing in san francisco also they are wiping the buses and some ways with disinfectant so disinfectant is there for sure uh, Australian government, they have issued some guidelines for drivers and passengers. All of these things were there. In France, they have, you know, a reserve street for pedestrians and bicycles. Because in Paris particularly, the public transport share is very, very high. That's right. And, you know, I mean, in uh, for NMT also, it is very high. They have good street development. They have good, you know, uh, coverage of public transport with tubes. Around 400, 500 kilometers of network, which was there below, below the roads. So, kind of, you know, doubling the capacity of my transit corridors, actually. Mask will be compulsory. That is there. It is very very common. Uh, apart from that, uh, the good part that uh, the mayor actually initiated, where you know it was a quarter hour city call kind of an initiative, where most daily needs are within a short walk bike ride or public transport coming to reduce again congestion and pollution and improve quality of life. So that is there. Barcelona, interesting, has announced 4.4 million euros to reduce traffic. This is very important thing. They have you know I mean uh, they have announced funding from government uh, to public transport agencies for reducing traffic, including the creation of extra 21 kilometer of bike lanes. So some sort of, you know, initiatives has to come from a government, from state government, from central government, you know, to unnecessarily, you know, I mean, uh, reduce the road on public transport, which is Bogota has added more than 100 kilometers of temporary bike lanes. So, you know, a lot of initiatives coming from NMT, but particularly why it is coming to NMT, because the more share in foreign cities, people like to cycle, people like to, you know, walk uh, to their, uh, destination that is there. Singapore's you know land transport is very famous as initiated campaigns and creates posters and social media which is there. Safar being supplied with vitamin C tablets. It is very very important because you know like I said, uh, we have to you know I mean ensure the immunity which is there. And uh, I have you know read and you know I've studied. I've observed that vitamin C, vitamin D3, and zinc uh, tablets you know are very very uh, actually you know, providing helpful to. Uh, improve immunity in your body. So that is there. So they are providing vitamin C tablets to the staff actually. In Berlin, city authorities are identifying areas with major pedestrian. Again, you know, initiative coming to uh, sort, sort of related to non-motorized transport. In China, basically, <laughs> where, you know, when this uh, COVID started, they have begun 
to use advanced ultraviolet light nowhere in india they are using it you know i mean they are just focusing on thermal scanning or maybe uh, you know sanitization of it but they have been you know using ultraviolet light to clean the vehicles actually this is very good uh, initiative apart from that they have created health check control points that is uh, there actually in africa they have revised the operating hours for all road based public transport mode and they have been allowing 70% of passengers in india we are allowing 50% but they were allowing 70% but particularly you know such in south africa in maybe the situation not so bad as in india so that is it. hong kong subway sending robots to disinfect trains of coronavirus again you know i mean a good initiation on their part the staff are working in split teams of amb rotating between offices so it is a good thing so you know Well, this is just a kind of summary that the lessons we learned from overseas actually. So one is cleaning and sanitization of buses, preparing guidelines of staffs, create task forces, minimize on board trips. So what is that? All the, what we have learned actually, right? Buses to be allowed to transport 50 percent passengers, staff to be supplied with vitamin C tablets. So this is a kind of you know I mean uh, a guideline level that all these components. Uh, if if a guideline has to be made on either advisory, it has to be issued. Uh, for public transport agency all these components has to be you know uh, taken care of because they have been taken care of on you know i mean which is that outside cities or the international cities has also done this apart from the most important you know the thing is that re planning of the cities to make more safe and people friendly cities including the creation of bikeless and pedestrian streets so that is important very important. <clears throat> apart from that you know i mean uh, various transport agency we have seen you know, they have been covered in presentation but talking about indian city how can we how indian city is lifeline public transport can start again that is a question we need to focus on so these are you know uh, four to five things that has to be done which is which should be mandatory for all the public transport agencies which is very very important so the first step part which is which is there is temperature of transport staff when we when i say transport staff i you know related with drivers conductors so the depot staff which is there so early morning when you know drivers and conductors come to my depot or something like that they have to be you know thermally screened second they have to be equipped with adequate protection gear gear like face mask that has to be mandatory and that is there you know i mean if they are not wearing it the penalty is penalty is being you know levied on them third which is important sanitize of bus feet after each trip it is not something that you have to you know just just do the sanitization of these buses uh, after you know just a day, you know one or two times in a day or maybe at, at the end of the day but you have to do compulsorily after each trip because we don't know uh, what people are traveling who are who is infected and uh, how is moving actually right so that is that is very important apart from that we have to ensure buses to be filled to no more than 50% capacity that is one person only one per seat traditionally if you see if you see indian city bus says we have to person what seat shall be allowed testing to check kiosk in to identify covid that can be done but probably it should be you know we need quite the uh, closed systems in best buses when you have to you know, open bus stop uh, pretty i'm not sure whether this can be applied or not so you know how do you uh, you know ensure uh, that the buses will be filled with no more than 50% capacity maybe you know some sticker sort of you know blockage on uh, the seats has to be done like uh, you know, on the top image you can see that floor and seat marking has to be carried out in all the buses to encourage social distance and that advisory has to be issued in from passengers and has to be communicated in press as well and uh, uh, this is something that uh, public transport agency has to ensure apart from that you know i mean in uh, uh, the second image which you can see they block the front area driver in the buses to save drivers from getting infected this is very important because drivers are an important resource person or public transport if they get you know uh, disinfected you know, you know, lot, lot of buses comes from each depot they have been allocated because you know we have seen that i guess you know i have uh, referred to best as well uh, they have around 50 60 depots in mumbai actually uh, if if in a case if you, you know i mean uh, if you can just imagine that if one driver of one depot gets infected uh, then according to contact tracing and according to this norms government norm the whole depot will be sealed and that means my whole depot operation will stop now each depot will have at least 80 to 90 buses which are being allocated from that depot on the routes meaning that 80 to 90 buses will directly you know my capacity will reduce by 80 to 90 and you can imagine the kind of you know i mean uh, the uh, the thing that there will be you know the, the capacity will reduce and then you know public transport agencies will uh, face the issues 
so that is why you know i mean safeguarding the driver is an important thing and conductors uh, when you run public transport services so that is it apart from that uh, you know we have seen the buses uh, that the in the initial ventilation can also increase and reduction the risk of infection we can retrofit some windows vents to air condition fields right and providing hand sanitizer gel in public transport vehicles and interchanges as well that can be done but uh, that is going installed and you know exit and entry because one if once if passengers boards a bus you know if travel it, if it is located in midway that doesn't solve the problem that doesn't make sense basically you have to have this uh, hand sanitizer gel installed in entry and exit part you know just to and make sure that all the passengers they are you know getting sanitize their hands you know before they get in bus or before they get out of the bus so that is see role of technology is extremely important because you know we have seen uh, in terms of if you say any kind of public transport if you say uh, bangalore bmtc if you say mumbai suburban mumbai local mumbai bus services we have seen you know conductors is are uh, giving tickets by contacts and with covid in place we have to reduce contact so contact how to you know how we can go for contactless tickets so that is something we need to ensure and how do you do it you know i mean it is not something that uh, uh, we need to you know just it is very simple that we need to you know to think about the conductors also that uh, we need to have contactless uh, payments so this is something that promoting users of contactless payment cards such as smart cards maybe ticket purchase from mobile application by portal has to be increased particularly maybe government can be you know thought think of you know and no paper tickets right and uh, you can, they can just uh, you know get it from you know some this uh, smart cards only but basically uh, when it comes to this distribution government to has to ensure that all the commuters of public transport have to have you know this kind of card they have to you know i mean uh, uh, open uh, this extra service center which are there to distribute these cards particularly and then they can go for contactless payment compulsory use of digital payments and smart cards that has been done because minimizing paper ticket for at least 6 months and this will help in contactless payment and that will actually you know help in reducing the infection so that is something we need to think of more outlets like i you know covered in first point that and home delivery of non personalized cards smart cards to avoid queues at the limited existing outlets so maybe you know government can think of some zone wise or maybe ward wise outlets right or maybe you know can collaborate with uh, some ten ptm or maybe some malls or maybe some shopping complexes uh, to distribute these cards with you know to commuters encouraging use of poll validators is also very important a fair box fixed fare system can be put in place so there is nothing this for those who are, who are not knowing it maybe you know best is not using this poll validator kind of a thing but surat is using it and the body is using it i just want to explain there is nothing but there is a kind of a validator which is installed on you know buses so maybe if you climb the buses you have to tap in that the uh, tap in will record you know the location and the time all right and when you get out of the bus automatically when you tap out The 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 net fare will be deducted from your card. So card is nothing but a wallet kind of thing where you will have to fill balance of fifty rupees or let's say hundred rupees, right? And when you travel, when you tap in tap out the uh, the, the fare which you have, it will be deducted automatically from those cards. That is nothing but that's kind of very little. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, these are you know this technology which I you know I mean uh, uh, made uh, you guys understand was. Well, it's very much related to AFCS kind of thing, where you know, have automatic fare collection system. How to do it? Second technology, which is very important, is related to ITMS, which is Intelligent Transit Management System. Right. So there are two ITMS and AFCS. So AFCS was first how to how to go for contactless payment, and second is ITMS, where you can focus on Intelligent Transit Management System. so maybe you know i mean passenger information displays at bus stops or stations or depot can be put in use to play awareness videos for passengers and staff so this is very very important see it is not something that it should be you know used just to play awareness videos but in surat what we are doing it you know we are using this passenger information displays uh, to you know make aware uh, the passengers about the live expected time of arrival of my buses so maybe you know i mean sitting at your home if if, uh, if a student is or if a, in mumbai we have seen that you know i mean people are waiting uh, uh, you know each bus stop has its own capacity uh, before covid the bus stop capacity basically 10 to 12 persons uh, that can be accommodated in a bus stop not more than that but with social distancing norms in place 
around 5 percent can also can only just stand on one bus stop and that is very important if more people come to your bus stop right it will you know increase my chance of infection and that has to be reduced so basically uh, you know if you have this apps you know mobile apps in your installed in your mobile mobile right if you know that where my bus is so before you know going uh, from your home all right if if you know minimize the waiting time at your bus stop if you know where your bus before 5 minutes only you can leave from your home you can get your to your bus stops okay and then uh, you can maybe board your your bus so this way you know the waiting time can be reduced with this technology kind of a thing and that is very very important after covid scenario apart from that you know i mean passenger announcement system which is there that has to be you know i mean installed in uh, buses for spreading awareness use of advanced cameras can also be done at bus stations and in the buses for thermal screening to come in see these are these are nothing you know this is not something which is very new and uh, that has come in place after covid this was there a lot of cities were doing this kind of you know uh, technology things uh, before covid as well because this is something you know this is very very uh, basic thing a passenger has to get aware about the buses about the live ets right where by my buses are you know announcement things and these cameras which are installed we have seen the kind of uh, security concerns uh, particularly in delhi which was there right before two three years like a kind of two three incidents were had related to women so women are also you know this kind with this kind of cctv cameras and advanced cameras which are installed at bus station and buses they you need to have uh, you know it will be uh, important to have trust of your computers as well website and mobile application like i said you know i mean in surat we are using surat city mobile application in best also they have been using they have their own application which can be used for to convey the dynamic information actually right that is important to passenger regarding operations it is not just about sitting on in cars you know we now mumbai will have this monsoon kind of a thing and uh, there also you know a lot of uh, areas get water log so maybe uh, best buses will you know reroute their trips actually uh, and they will not go into areas where there is water log so how to you know spread information uh, to those uh, passengers who are you know stranded at those bus stations in those areas which are water log you have to give information that buses will not you know arrive on this bus stop so how to do it that can be done by you know giving them dynamic information and with this kind of itms and afcs things in place you can give those information you can you know pass those information directly to your customers and to your commuters with the sort of you know website and mobile application this is 21st century and we have to be digital and how digitalization can help a two public transport agency this was the best example that i you know tried to give <coughs> Uh, apart from that uh, you know we have to initiate campaigns and create posters on awareness for stations and buses right so that has also been to be done uh, limiting stop operation with short routes and scheduling more number of buses during peak hours so get this this second point particularly is very important as a planner as a transport planner who is doing route planning or maybe scheduling because you know in from afc is not something that is just contactless but afc is also gives me the dynamic data so if i want to know that how much amount of passenger let's say uh, just now uh, it's 11:40 right so at 11:40 am how much amount of passengers there in my system in on which bus stops what is the revenue so you know i can reschedule my buses in such a way that i give you know more number of buses in peak hours so as to you know i mean my buses can move easily with uh, the help of social distancing norms right and it can create uh, it can cater to the patronage which is there uh, in terms of demand so this is this second point is very very important which we plan and need to consider actually apart from maybe alarms and installing live feed cameras to monitor the passenger buses that can be done to ensure and enabling long term buses to minimize passenger trips to the mode of two top of the like as you know covered this is nothing but in this case so all these things have to covered apart from that you know that effective monitoring of bus station from control and command centers that has to be done to maintain limit of people to be allowed to gather inside the station and buses see this is particularly very important you know i mean when you take example of mumbai suburb right or maybe mumbai local and mumbai best the main difference between two of the transit one is you know we are we say that it is a local and this is a city bus actually but mumbai local is a closed kind of a system if you want to make it close that you can do it you know by ensuring the passengers on boarding and alighting points but on mumbai best service you can't have each and every or you can't deploy each and every staff at each and every bus stops it is impossible to do it okay because it will require additional funds as well so this monitoring of bus stations has to be done you know,
by creating closed stations. How you can do it? There is something that you know public transport agency has to think of it. How can we you know convert my open system into closed system, particularly when COVID is there, right? Uh, apart from that, you know where uh, when passengers are queuing up at bus stations, you need to maintain that whether they are in line or get onto the bus or making out of way of the bus station, you have to maintain a minimum distance of six feet from others. So that has to be. But you can use also use the advanced thermal cabling. We have seen Beijing doing it, right? But with, you know, passengers getting thermal scan. But we kind of Mumbai population, we uh, you know we have to we have to see whether this ad advanced you know thermal cameras can be worked at Mumbai local stations or Mumbai best stations. Basically, we need to you know, address it. <laughs> So, you know, we, we can see a LED kind of a screen where they uh, thermal scan the passengers with fever or without fear. If it is without fear, if the temperature is beyond certain limit, if it is acceptable, then you can have a, uh, your journey. And if it is you no, know, you can, you know, straight away you have to exit your system. So, this can be done particularly if it's a closed system, right? And if the first bus arrives, that is enough passengers, if it is by 50 percent of capacity then passenger has to wait for the next one it's not something that only public transport agency has to follow these norms but it is passengers you know it is also responsibility of passengers to know how they should travel actually and i it is both ways uh virtual passes can be you know provided in terms of you know pass initiation or maybe uh, which you know, QR code generation yet can be done. In Mumbai best service you have know, you this QR code ticket, but they need to install those fabricated validators on buses and maybe you know via station then on the spot. Uh, all these you know infrastructure we have studied what can be done, what will be done, uh, improving fleet or maybe you know using technology by improving sanitization, disinfectants, providing masks and all these things we have studied. But the main you know uh, my from where the money will flow. So that is, you know, kind of uh, the big elephant kind of a phrase that, uh, you know, we have been, uh, you know, we seen, we have observed that already, you know, in uh, India, uh, the STUs and public transport agencies are short of for that fund. They don't have that much fund, you know, I mean, uh, to cater to their operational uh, expenses and they are making losses as of now. Uh, but with uh, this kind of things, where they will, you know, get it from, where the funds will flow from. So maybe a state and national government, you know, they should treat public transport, they should help the public transport agencies as of now, but to, by treating them public transport services as social obligation. And, you know, they can think of, you know, hiring buses from I or private operators because, you know, every uh, state operating agency or maybe public, public transport agencies, will have limitations in terms of their fleet, which is there on road. They can't maximize the fleet, you know, in a day or maybe in 15 days in one month, because that sort of, you know, thing, it requires time, right? And uh, if, if you know, in very second day that has to be done, uh, the good option to, uh, to do is, you know, to hire buses from private operators to expand the network. You can give your routes, you can give your schedules to our private operators, you know, you can uh, do it on cross-cost basis where, you know, we can pay that private bus operator on per kilometer basis, right? And uh, they can operate on your routes by managing this social distancing norms. And the payment can be done by per, per kilometer basis throughout the month. So that is something that, you know, Surat is doing it. Uh, we, have, we are running our buses on cross cost models. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, you know, it's just a, a sort of a layout just to make you understand that uh, this is uh, nothing but, you know, a typical layout of a bus actually. And what we actually are saying is by if we have to reduce the capacity by half, we are nothing that, you know, we are restricting the movement of seat on each seat, you know, just if the restricted part you can see. And apart from that, the, these are the designated area for standing passengers. Particularly, and you know, if you ask me, this is not to scale, right? For architecture students, you know, they are very much uh, attentive about the skill issues, and they pinpoint basically. Just uh, I apologize because I'm an engineer, and uh, I don't know this is not to scale diagram. Uh, so uh, we have to, in if the passenger is standing, also they have to maintain a minimum distance of six feet, right? So that is that has to be ensured. Particularly, if you can see the dotted red line, which you can, you know, the, the driver area is being separated to energy tips. So that is there. 
uh apart from you can you know you have markings for social you can use uh, these markings for social distancing as well and uh, the main part here is you know not to create some fancy markings or maybe you know uh, something which is aesthetically appealing to my passengers you keep it simple for you know because when you say public transport a lot of people from lig and mig background comes to your you know transit system and the main aim him has to you know make your people understand but not to create some fancy sort of uh, markings uh, so you know people won't understand and they will just you know violating this social distancing you know. but keep it simple so as you know keep it in your local language if you want but keep it such that you know people the commuters who are boarding the buses or maybe can understand by seeing that figure or maybe by this uh, your diagram that what uh, the public transport agency is meaning to uh, give information so that is an important part uh about that you know i mean uh, we have we have covered a lot of things you know how uh, international case studies uh, how the international studies is being doing what india is doing and you know how what we can do actually just to liberate this public transportation but you know just a sort of case study because you know i have been working on uh, surat city buses and brts buses here also the situation is not so good around 100 cases are coming every day average and uh, you know we are trying our best uh, to you know operationalize this uh, buses to give services to people and you know i will just take uh, some slides to you know make you understand what surat is doing particularly on planning point of view how we are doing it so this is something that you uh, just uh, go through so basically this is the system characters of surat we have you know 110 km of brts and we have city bus i will not go into detail there were around 741 buses and the operational timing uh, pre covid was around 6 to 9 pm so that was there in gujarat uh, so this is the public transport network of uh, our city and right? you can see the blue which is in city buses the red in brts and green is in something which is high mobility corridor which is the inner ring road sort of a thing right and you can see the coverage of how people were covered you know we have seen that within smc the coverage within the municipal corporation limits uh, we are covering around 99% of population remember when you see when you say coverage it is nothing but you know my transit corridor i you know i mean take a buffer of 500 meters on both side because that is the catchment from where my people will come i that there is an assumption that 500 meters is a walkable distance and in those walkable distance my people can you know that is my catchment area of public transport from to where my people will come on to my existing public transport bus stops yeah so that is it yeah so these are the bus stops where you know i mean uh, brts and city buses and all those things and these are the probable interchanges so what we have done is you know i mean in surat uh, what we have done is you know we have planned in an integrated way so city buses and brts buses will you know move into brts corridor out of brts corridor so rather they are not competing with each other but they are in case in terms of complementing each other we have seen amdavad you know where uh, separate agl buses brts buses are being used by some other entity and uh, amts is being used by they are you know uh, competing with each other so there is not something that should be entertained but here we are complementing each other this was this is an important thing that uh, you know we found that that uh, this was an suited uh, public transport average ridership now why this is important because i have to know that how many uh, persons or maybe passengers are coming at my bus stop throughout the day so if certain you know green dots you can see the green dots in my map so those are bus stops where more than 1500 passengers were were boarding my bus stops right in that cases in that case actually you know i will require some sort of manpower on those bus stops to you know for smoothing or uh, uh, you know uh, passage passage of uh, passengers uh, from my bus stops to the buses actually right so this is an important you know statistics how to do it this is something that uh, some public transport agency can can take thought of we did uh, some cluster analysis so you know, this was uh, way back before one month so just you know i mean it is not some this is not updated actually but uh, you know i prepared the slide just to understand the process how we do it actually this is an important thing so you know it is the red line with the border line which you say is an smc boundary the red part which you say is a cluster it was a cluster area before you know one month and this was an important part you know because lot of cases were covid cases were coming from twist clusters actually so what we did you know we demarcated those uh, areas right and we separated it out from our area so you can see the cluster area was 30 square kilometer in size 
But then what we did, we overlaid our entire public transport network on our suited city map, right? So I can know that how much amount of my public transport uh, network lies in my cluster zone. So that is very important. So you can see, so if I overlay it on Google Earth, you know, with the help of GIS, I can know that how much amount of my network is under cluster zone. So 93 kilometers of my network was under cluster zone. Then the important part, and again, this was extremely important because by overlapping or overlaying, you know, bus stops on this public transport network, I could have known that how much amount of stops were coming under my public transport network, which falls under my cluster zones. So 226 stops were falling under my cluster zones. So this is very important. You know, I should, uh, this was strictly, you know, I mean, uh, enforced by local authorities as well that buses, uh, should skip containment zones. You should. You can't. You know. I mean, allow any passengers who are coming from containment zones to my buses. So if I want to, you know, ensure it, how do do it? I will. I will need some information, right? I will need to some information to give it to my press or maybe to, to issue advisor. So this is how we do it, right? Uh, then this is just a BRTS network. I will just take an example. Uh, see, this was the road. So let's say from 2040 was, you know, I mean, was Udna point and Sachin point. You can see my two stocks were falling in cluster zones, right? And those two stocks were owned in this Elastin BRTS and owned Jasta BRTS. So how do I operate my bus? Uh, one option was, you know, because it were two stocks my, was coming in my cluster zone, I should not operate this road. Or maybe as a public transport agency, I could think of, right? Like why, why to, you know, I mean, uh, forcibly, uh, you know, I mean, uh, by, I can give, go for a second option as well, where I will operate from Udna to Sachin, right? By skipping those stops, two stops in between uh, those who are coming in clusters. So neither boarding or neither alighting, not alighting will happen on those two stops, right? And buses will skip those two stops for my road. So that can be done actually, right? So what we got, we, you know, I mean, uh, we took second option and then we are running our buses right away. So that way, you know, I mean, same way. This was the whole road. Right in between, you can see my cluster zones. Now, see, this is an important study. This is an important thing which you need to understand. On left hand part, if you see the stops, some sort of you know some this cluster just, uh, you can see it is not on, on both the sides of my road. It is just on the one side, right? So maybe if you ask uh, some people, then you, know, you will be able to like it that you know I mean it is just on one side. Choro, you know you can allow people from one side as well. On Middle part, which is there, they are on both the sides of my, you know, it is surrounded by clusters on both the sides. You need to understand that, as I said, my catchment area is, you know, 500 meters on both the sides. So people will be coming from those 500 meters. And that, and that, that is the area that I need to be very, very cautious about. We have to, you know, maintain that no people shall come to my bus stops, you know, from those containment zones. Because if we allow people from coming from containment zones, we do not know whether they are, you know, I mean, infected or not infected because we have asymptomatic uh, patient as well, you know, which are, you know, which don't have any symptoms. So if I thermal scan them also, you know, that, that will, you know, I mean, that doesn't make sense actually. So that, that, that is something that has to be very, very careful. Similarly, this was the rule. So and similarly, you know, we carried out uh, this exercise just, you know, they make you understand. Uh, so this is where, you know, my presentation ends. Uh, maybe we can, you know, uh, interact it in a better way by you know i mean uh getting a question answer round uh sort of a thing and then we, maybe we can clear some more doubts where, where you know the students basically or maybe the participants uh where they will have yeah shuchi we can't hear you if you can you know just uh, turn on the uh, turn off your mic yeah yeah sorry yeah so yeah. it was a very in-depth presentation uh, and I think so it will make yeah. students understand that how these macro aspects uh, affect our spaces which architects design. So we have received actually yeah. a large number of questions, but uh, but time permits to take take up only a few questions out of them. So we have shortlisted. So the first question is from Sukesha. So she is asking, how will local trains, metros and buses start working with social distancing when Mumbai's population is approximately 2 crores and 80% of people will uh, use public transport? And even uh, they uh, spend their two hours of the day in that public transport system only. So what do you have to say about this? <laughs> All right. So it's, it's, it's a very interesting question, I must say. Uh, 
see uh, i will not go just I'll, uh, just not not a, uh, just a one answer right i will go with i will divide this answer into three or four parts first part which we have clearly said that the public transport capacity is reduced by 50% so that means you know i will require additional fleet right we have to double the fleet of mumbai trains as well as buses now mm-hmm. in buses like i said you know that best is done by you know deploying private uh, transport operators you know onto the roads but if you say mumbai local we have to think about the infrastructure probably in a city like mumbai where you know the public transport share is so much high uh, maybe we can go for you know uh, scattered uh, this office hours so maybe if some of the you know in some zones of my office starts from morning 6 am right in some zones my office can start from 7 am if some zones can my office can start from 8 am 9 am 10 am likewise so you know we do divide your people like in traveling pattern so my buses will not get you know i mean uh, accommodated with more amount of people and then uh, that is why you know my 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 capacity can you know reduce or maybe in uh, that can be you know uh, because it can match my demand so this is the second part third part maybe you can think of something like odd even which you know uh, delhi probably has you know i mean done it in the past as well maybe you can do it you know i mean we have seen uh, in gujarat basically in my city as well we have seen offices in first which was you know, before this unlock one happened right before that you know offices like surat is very famous for diamond and textile industries so what they were doing it you know they were opening these shops and textile industries in, based on odd even rule so half of 15 you know 15 days you can work from offices 15 days you can work from home probably so this is something you know you need to think there are a lot of things which you need to you know i mean come uh, we need to think as a public transport agency particularly as a local authority but the problem is you know to enforce enforcement is very very important but because you know just to uh, make some say, webinar out of it or maybe you know just speaking like this like i'm speaking this very very easy but uh, the problem lies on field right yes. the public transport authority and local then there is why you know we need uh, support from local administration so that is there yeah uh i think so you have addressed almost uh, completely the next question but uh, he is also asking that how you how will you make this cost uh, cost effective as you are adding uh, more buses to the system or more uh, uh, trains or whatever to the system so how will you make it cost effective this question is by uh, purvi user <laughs> yeah so that is that is also you know we know because you know i, I mean that is why i said the big elephant right the phrase which i use that uh, we need to you know address that from where my money will flow in and that is why you know that is where state governments and central government has to think of some subsidies or maybe you know because already public transport were making losses uh, uh, there are there are sqs where they are making 50% 40% and more than 30% they are making operational losses this is there and uh, maybe you know government can uh, think of some congestion charging or maybe parking policy has to be revised where you know you desensitize uh, is uh, the private transport and you know i mean sensitize the uh, public transport users so maybe you know you can uh, fare it higher or maybe you can do it but uh, yes uh, the big elephant lies where the money will come that is something that the government has to address here yeah. Uh, okay so next question is by dr nitin s kark so he is saying that government uh, public transport uh, due to covid has already made lot of losses so are there any reforms which are expecting in the public transport in india almost all stus and buses are loss making units how to recover these losses uh see i see it in a different way right when you see when you compare you know it is uh, public transport agencies making losses i do not say as they are making losses okay for me they are making profit not in terms of one money but they are in terms of you know environment or maybe carbon footprints right so it is high time that you know public transport agencies like, like i said you know we need to you know i mean reframe our mind actually right that public transport is a service and it is not a profit or loss making company that is something that you know that that strong message has to be passed to uh, users as well as you know public transport authorities and government bodies because you know i will just take an a small example if you have best bus service if you have a scheduled departure at 6 am you know if just two or three passengers are there in my bus okay if i meant to make profit what i will do i will wait for my bus to to get entirely filled right and then i will depart my bus but because is a public transport service 
where you know service is most important i will still depart my bus at 6 am i will not worry about my passengers if there are two or three or five right because i am catering to service i am offering service and that is why you know loss or profit is doesn't import it doesn't make sense but is something that it should be you know i mean uh, maybe seen as a service uh, to the society to users and to our cities and to our nation yeah, yeah. uh so i think i think that's a brilliant answer okay mustafa sir and and this yeah. entire paradigm shift is extremely important especially for the students who are uh, hearing this i mean planning and urban planning uh, what sir says is a service you have to see that as a public good and it is the responsibility yeah. and the duty of the government to be able to give this service so at best it is right. a loss of profit but you cannot see it as a loss because eventually it's a brilliant answer so i really appreciate it. yeah thanks lot sir <laughs> <laughs> so the next question is by Nikita Purohit. She is saying that she is a resident of Surat, and she has done her master thesis on walkability of uh, Bhimrad Althan Canal Road. Uh, uh, she said that the streets are not well connected by public transport and neither walkable, which is also one of the reason for the increase in number of two wheelers in the city. So what do you have to say about it? <laughs> uh. Hi Nikita, you know, I mean, you are from Surat. That's a good question. See, I partially agree with you, Nikita. Uh, the thing in Surat, I have observed uh, basically, you know, we have seen the footpaths actually. Now, you know, uh, we have seen footpaths of one feet and one point five feet, and they call it as a footpath. A good, the important part is, you know, with footpaths having one and one point five feet, that is not something that we call as a footpath. We need to have a wider footpaths. like when you know we have seen uh, places like madrid and then paris and then even mumbai you know they are doing good and you know i mean uh, focusing on public transport pedestrian free uh, things uh, but before you know some few before 10 15 years surat was not focusing on uh, developing all these things but then after you know they prepared some cmp kind of a thing which is comprehensive mobility plan for the year 2045 where they you know address these issues they shortlisted the issues in short term medium term and long term and they divided into these benefits as well so now you know we at the corporation the local corporation which is smc which is there you know they are being you know very much uh, doing their hard work in pro- you know improving this public transport as well as the the local street network and complete street network when i say right by giving them uh, bicycle track and providing good footpaths with complete ring right if you have you don't have continuity of footpaths then that footpath is still you know it will be it will not be able to you know cater to my pedestrian friendly and it will you know do not be safe uh, for me to walk on my roads but to have complete ring of footpaths complete street development from with full arrow the blue right uh, and uh, that is why you know i mean uh, when you say about public transport uh surat just had before 5 years surat i will you know just try to you know share this it uh, the city had just 1% share of public transport just 1% right the authority realized it you know i mean uh, they they realized that surat will be delhi in next 10 years if they are it will not enter in me and that is why what they did is uh, uh, providing you know good public transport facilities but we need to understand that i pub- if i say public transport is not just about public transport right if you know the buses don't come at my home if i just you know step down right that the buses don't arrive at my home i have to walk to public transport stops or maybe metro stops or maybe like say local suburban metros right or maybe some uh, local met- metro metro stations i have to walk and when i will be able to walk when i will have some good footpaths when i will feel safe right so that is why you know this all thing excess and aggress kind of modes and excess and aggress kind of uh, travel times also comes into picture so it is not just public transport alone but more of you know combination of various modes supporting my public transport yeah so that is uh, really in a, and i appreciate his your question there is something that authority has to you know think of this but more or less you know this issues they have identified and they have uh, doing their best in addressing by making cmp of 2045 yeah yeah uh, rightly said even surat uh, sorry even pune has uh, you know quite forwarded in this aspect they have wider footpaths to travel to walk sorry and the next question is uh, in a nation right. with a considerable number of uh, digital illiteracy should we rely on digital modes for transport information to users 
uh, see, that's a that's a good concern that uh, the guy has shown. Uh, uh, we know, you know, we we know our people, and uh, you know, we, we in order to do this user satisfaction surveys, so we know the background from there where they are coming from. But in case you know they don't understand this digital, then uh, you know the responsibility lies on public authorities in the local government, right, to make them informative. It is that has to be you know very user friendly kind of a thing. Card has to be user friendly. It is not. It should not be again you know sophisticated in terms of fancy thing. But it should be very simple that you know that should be addressed to each and every person. Either it comes from L I G or maybe M I G or maybe H I G, right? Uh, you, that and there comes the universal access part of a point. You know, our system has to be you know such that universal access, uh, irrespective of someone who is coming from so and so financial background, irrespective of someone who is differently able or maybe women or maybe gender, all sort of discrimination we have to be you know very very careful when you plan for public transport or maybe plan for our food parts or maybe designs, right? That should be universal accessible. That should be used by all. Irrespective of uh, you know, I mean, financial uh, categories or maybe uh, you know, gender categories or maybe you know, uh, someone who is coming from different label background or maybe something like that. So that challenge lies on public transport authority to make them informed, and that should be the card and wallet should be very usable and that should be you know, user friendly mm -hmm. to make them uh, you know, I mean, used to you know, those kind of contactless payments. Yeah. Yeah. Good point here again. Uh, also, a very important point that Sir makes here is about this inclusive design, which we always try to tell our students yeah. that you are designing for all and universal access necessarily is not just for the wheelchair bound. It is for all sectors of yeah. CC. Uh, and just to add to what Sir has said, and I really like his answer again, is, is um, the chicken and egg problem in the sense that you do not have to be smart to buy a smartphone. Often, when you buy a smartphone, you get smart enough to use it. So, if I think these are user friendly and a lot of these are foolproof, and after all, a picture says a hundred words, you do not have to know language. It can be done by icons. So, I feel uh, that uh, that will not be a challenge. If the bigger challenge is about the elephant that he talks about, it is about the readiness and the willingness of the powers to be to listen to the technocrat who thinks that ITS or intelligent transport system will help if they can pump in the money rather what i would say is i have also worked as an urban planner the 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 frustration comes in the fact of uh, the way it is finally prioritized mm -hmm. finally since it is the lawmaker right. the MPs and the mlas or the or the municipal commissioners who basically do a prioritization as to which is more important than what if if they understand uh, the importance of the system if, and if they give due importance to the technocrat who is the urban planner in this case or the transportation planner who says sir this has to be done before this then i think uh, we half the battle is won there very true sir very true uh, i think so now we can uh, go towards our students who have joined with us so i i would uh, like to ask shaleen what she has to say about it she has just started Hello, sir. Uh, thank you so Hello. much. Hello, Shalini. Yeah. Uh, got to know what India is doing for the safer transportation and what is our duty. Uh, so because of this, now I personally feel safer to use public transportation in future. Uh, I would like to ask you, though we follow all this regulation in social distancing, there will be same or incre increased numbers of passenger in the future. Uh, so how can we cater them in architectural aspects? Will there be social uh, special provisions on bus stations or railway stations to keep uh, safe social distancing? Uh, that is a very, very good question, Shalin. Uh, you know, that is an extremely good question. You know, from an architectural background, you know, you might, uh, you know, think of some design, innovative design, where, you know, uh, with that design in place, with, with that bus stop in place, right, uh, that social distancing norm will be, you know, I mean, uh, followed uh, on their own, 
right because you know i mean before before covid the bus stops were not designed like you know social distancing norms we have to place you know this markings and stickers in places on bus stops to ensure that people stand by maintaining distance right but if you can you know think of some project kind of a thing or maybe you can you know uh, recreate the design of bus stop or maybe uh, a terminal or maybe a station right uh, where you know social distancing thing will be you know i mean enforced on their own right that can that will be extremely good and it will be you know a kind of a renowned idea which will be spread all, all, not just on the country but uh, across the globe as well uh, so we have two more uh, students with us uh, vinay uh, kataria and priyanka vaidya both are thesis students and their topic is related to uh, transportation so i would like to ask priyanka what do you have to uh, say hello sir if you have any question so, you can yeah Hello, so like you said that there will be an increase in the number of private uh, owned vehicles after the covid 19 so in terms of mumbai scenario it will uh, it will increase the uh, number of buses because of norms and uh, that so it will again lead to the uh, congestion on the roads because in mumbai everywhere we can't uh, afford widening of roads So in that case, how these things will work? Uh, so Priyanka, uh, see, it is not something that we have to widen roads at every places, right? But certainly we have to, you know, think that if my road is there, it is pre-occupied, right? Uh, by you know, I mean, sort of uh, you know people which are there. You, you know, you you might have seen uh, Mumbai road as well. a you know, lot of encroachers and uh, they have occupied the road because the capacity is there it is not something that capacity is not there but one or two lanes are uh, encroached by you know a lot of activities were going on road so that is not being properly enforced actually and that is why you know we had uh, the local authority has to come forward and they have to create their, their road spaces to to utilize it to maximum capacity because we have seen in india you know we have seen in mumbai as well uh where you know a lot of markets has been you know done on footpaths and then and then the issue you know realizes uh, that where does the pedestrian walk actually because half of the footpaths you know are occupied by the street vendors so how do you do it actually and there comes the issue i mean as a local authority you know they will do it you know by removing these encroachers but that is also there you know i mean that is being related to employment actually it is not something that it is not very simple to remove them but to give them them alternative space so they can you know they run their own business actually right so it is something that it is very as an authority you have to think of both the parts and then you have to make your decision yeah uh, yes vinay what do you want to ask uh, hello sir it was uh, really a great presentation and the research data whatever you provided it was greatly map the mapping was really great so my question is like everything going on today in the public transport is really very difficult situation it is uh, facing difficult right. situations so and majorly the transport system the transport authority they have a 95% reduction in their revenues and etc so whatever we are facing right now so the major population we see why uh, who travel uh, long distances other daily workers like uh, who work on wages so they don't have a specific bus stop or they they just stand on a particular nakas where they are uh, collected from like they are appointed by the builders or any contractors they pick them up and they uh, go for their daily work so how will that population will be catered uh see i mean uh, yeah it's a good uh, question again uh in surat you know we have uh, i will take my example of my city because we have my we have laborers who are coming from uh, specific zones in surat right in mumbai also uh, like uh, you know i will be sure that you know some laborers will be coming from specific zones only they will not be you know localized on they will not be staying on some uh, you know high localities or maybe medium localities there will be there will be some specific locations from where they will be coming from and that is why it is not you know i mean a uh, lot of government actually karnataka government as well as maharashtra government they have asked private players private players also you know to make choice of these things 
No, it is not something. It is not job of those laborers also. We have to support. We have to support them. Or maybe you know, there some this builders association can think of some buses or maybe some small vans. You know, best is running. You know, uh, this mini buses which is very uh, compact in size. So maybe they can think of running those buses or a van kind of a thing. Uh, to bring them from the localities to their, you know, uh, the point of which is there, because you know, builders are, you know, they are very much capable of uh, doing such philanthropic activities. And the point is here, you know, they have to come up with uh, the, some philanthropic societies or maybe some with the help of some NGOs by providing some additional uh, support which is required to those laborers. So it is not something that uh, it is high time that you know companies uh, care about the, from where they are coming or from which part. This high time, you know, company should take all of these records and they support their employees from where they are coming, how they are coming, and are they, are they maintaining social distancing norms as well? Because if a labor is infected, that the entire site will get infected, and particularly that loss will be very, very huge as compared to that private van if it's deploying on that road. So that is something that you need to have that kind of a support from your private players as well. Very nicely addressed, Mustafa. So now I would like to invite uh, Joydeep sir uh, to give concluding remarks and uh, give a thank you note. I think so. Uh, Joydeep sir is not there. Wait. No, I'm there. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm there. You can yeah. hear me. Okay, yes. Mustafa yeah. sir. Uh, once again, uh, uh, very enlightening and. Uh, extremely filled with data and mapping and it was very enlightening for us. Uh, I, before I go into uh, the formal vote of thanks, uh, I have a personal question, which I kind of added uh, as a, it's not a personal question, it's a question that, that I, uh, I don't have an answer to. Uh, as an urban planner and more as a transport planner, I would like you to address this. Um, this comes from what I hear is happening uh, after the unlock 1.0 uh, in Kolkata. There is a paradox. So private bus unions, they are now unwilling to operate their fleet because they are saying that if you allow me to only take a limited number of passengers, then I will be making losses. And so there is no point in me running the buses. So the so the, so the private right. operators are saying that the traditional, uh, like the, the cross cost, as you said, is now falling apart. So we will not run the buses. How do we solve the paradox uh, uh, as a transport authority? Uh, yes, sir. It's a real uh, you know, uh, concern which is out there, actually. Uh, see, I will take an example, sir, because, you know, I mean, uh, basically when you talk about urban transport, right, you have two, three models which are there. So one is gross cost model, which Surat is using, which Ahmedabad is using, where you are paying the operator on per kilometer basis, right? Uh, so that is there, where, you know, you give schedules and your routes to operators, Okay, they will operate their uh, routes on their free, on uh, on uh, alternative frequencies and alternative routes, which is given by them. And probably, you know, you can give separate tender for fare collection agencies for those public transport. Second model, which is there, is net cost model. In net cost model, the authority, you know, will you know, I mean, give buses to private players to operate the buses. And this is, you know, very relatable, which you are telling with Kolkata kind of a thing. So authority will, you know, my the authority will give contract to private players who will operate the buses, who will collect the fares as well, and they have to operate on their own. Okay, and they have to give subsidy also, some sort of premium, all right, to government at the end of the contract. So maybe in Surat, before five years, I will take example of Surat. So before five years, the the authorities were, you know, running buses, running buses on this net cost model, and he was making huge losses, particularly. But because of that, the service actually got affected. You know, he like I know I've just taken an example. So there are you know two three routes which are there. Uh, one route is you know uh, gaining maximum profit. Two route, second route is uh, gaining medium, and third is uh, giving low profit. Right. So what he used to do, he used to frequ adjust the frequency in such a way that all the buses come up to you know the route which have highest frequency. But basically, you know, you need to give uh, service to all the trade. Irrespective of he is making profit or loss, 
right so maybe you know kolkata is using this net cost model maybe if they can opt for gross cost model if you know they ask private players if local administration and public transport authorities come uh, uh, they you know they take a step ahead and they give this contract on per kilometer basis then this whole idea of you know private players making losses will uh, you know uh, get removed on their own and then you know maybe maybe government has to offer subsidy because that is this will you know be, be very reliable some amount which will be there a huge amount will be there in cost in because uh, each kilometer you know if it is an electric bus if it is you know a diesel operated bus it requires around if mini bus is there around 35 40 rupees per kilometer that is a kind of rate which is which is uh, there ongoing in india right if it is standard bus again it will rise to 55 60 odd rupees right and that is why you know i mean the public transport authority has to maintain the service uh, as of now in during the time of covid so maybe they can think of some six months kind of a contract with private players wherein they can give the buses on gross cost rather than giving on net cost yeah so that is something that uh, yes to do so thank you for your insight i will uh, surely share this with my friends back there uh so uh, yeah. we come to uh, the end of uh, this wonderful webinar uh, it has been extremely gratifying for us to have you with us uh, mr mustafa sonasat uh, we we have Thank tremendously you, gained uh, we have tremendously gained especially our students and and we faculty are also students uh, of anything of knowledge so uh, really thank you for your time and uh, uh, for your cooperative attitude of of uh, actually uh, sharing your experiences and your time uh, i uh, i would also uh, like to thank uh, a host of other people uh, please pardon me if i miss out some i will not be able to name all but first of all uh, with our management uh, dr k m vasudevan pillai who is our ceo and chairman and he is really the leading light that actually guides us goads us inspires us and coaxes us to have webinars like this to have interactions he always uh, says that every crisis is an opportunity we have to make the most of it so i'm glad that uh, uh, we have him as a leader and i would also like to mention uh, uh, daphne pillai ma'am and priyam sir who are also very forward thinking in their ways i would like to thank uh, dr lata kasture menon who is our deputy ceo of our campus and he has uh, she has been extremely uh, uh, thoughtful and she has been extremely supportive of all uh, the activities that we do uh, i want to thank uh, our principal ma'am uh, suchita sai ji madam and our entire faculty who uh, have rallied around and we are trying to put together such webinars especially for this one uh, shuchi joshi madam and also sarath sir who uh, have uh, actually directly contacted uh, mustafa sir and uh, because of uh, their network we are able to uh, have this uh, lovely webinar i'd like to thank uh, all my other faculty colleagues and finally of course Uh, the the very reason for all of this the students i would like to thank each and every student especially those who have uh, joined us in this meeting and all of you who are listening to this uh, via our youtube channel thank you very much and for everyone else other experts and other uh, related and interested people who are watching this uh, whether you are our colleagues our cohorts our students uh, Uh, thank you very much uh, for being here and thank you for your time and i hope it has enlightened us and this is uh, whetted our interest and appetite for uh, further insights into uh, into transportation planning in general and uh, how to handle uh, the crisis of the lockdown and the pandemic uh, especially from a transport point of view so thank you very much thank you very much sir uh, for your support and you know for giving me this uh, an opportunity i hope you know this has uh, solved our purpose uh, of uh, this uh, organizing this webinar and uh, you know i will really like uh, i mean to thank uh, your college as well you know pillai like college of architecture we have been you know i mean like rightly said you have to you know, be con transforming constraints into other uh, opportunities uh, for uh, students especially you know to expose uh, them on field actually right to giving this kind of exposure that what kind of you know real urban planning or maybe this or the challenges that we are facing uh, to make them aware about it 
So I would like thank uh, you know like to thank you as well as the college and uh, my you know I mean the colleagues which already were there in past uh, Mr. Chi and Mr. Sharad uh, for giving me this an opportunity and I am very very much obliged to share my experience. Yeah. You are welcome. It is our absolute pleasure to have had you here. And thank you for your time. And thank you everyone. With this, we formally bring uh, this thank webinar you. to a close. Uh, may you have a good Sunday and uh, next uh, week ahead may be fruitful for you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you. Thank you.